Hello, and welcome to a special op- episode of Open Exchange TV. We're going to discuss the Microsoft and Activision deal with Robert Scott from Axicon Partners. Thanks for joining us, Robert. Thanks for having me, Gus. Before we get into the details of Microsoft and Activision, Robert, can you tell us a bit about yourself and Axicon Partners? Sure. Well, I am a, a lawyer and a, a investor and trader. I started out as a lawyer. I clerked for a federal judge in Chicago after law school and worked uh, for a Wall Street law firm. I went into then financing companies, uh, mostly emerging growth companies, and including Pandora and a few others like that. And then I went to a large global hedge fund in New York where I co-managed a portfolio that was focused primarily on trading and investing in securities that were impacted by a variety of legal events. So litigation, regulation, legislation, government events, things like that. And that's so primarily gonna, what I focus on. Well, so you're gonna be great for this then because back okay. on January 18th, Microsoft announced its intention to acquire Activision for $68.7 billion. Which had Activision shareholders counting their profits. And since then there's been roadblocks. Robert, can you give us a breakdown of this deal and the potential industry impact? Sure. Well, so Microsoft, as you pointed out, Ducks, um, has uh, offered to acquire Activision for $95 a share in cash. This would be the largest acquisition that Microsoft has ever done, and it would be one of the largest acquisitions in U.S. history. Uh, It would be a transformative acquisition both for Microsoft and the industry. From an industry perspective, we're talking about a $200 billion industry. And if Microsoft acquires Activision and all its premium content, Microsoft would be the number three gaming company in the world behind Sony and Tencent. And for Microsoft, which currently generates about 10% of its revenues from gaming, this acquisition of Activision would be a huge deal because Activision generates what's known as AAA content. And in the gaming world, the AAA content is the premium content, which has the highest price points, which is the best content that consumers want to access. And so uh, Microsoft would be able to load that content onto its Xbox consoles, extend multi-game subscriptions to consumers, and importantly for Microsoft, begin to transition consumers into their cloud-based subscription business for gaming. And so it would be a very big deal for Microsoft to close this. And it's a big deal in the industry, um, which is why it's attracted the attention of the FTC. Well, you mentioned the FTC there. They've filed a lawsuit this week. And can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Let me, um, so the FTC did file an acquisition to block the Microsoft ATVI deal. So just parenthetically, just to, to preface this, The FTC is one of two federal agencies in the U.S. government with jurisdiction to oversee mergers and to block mergers if they feel they're anti-competitive. The other agency, of course, is the Department of Justice. The DOJ has authority under the Sherman Act and the Clayton Act essentially to stop monopolies or to block mergers that generate anti-competitive conduct. The FTC has its own statute called the FTC Act which also basically gives the FTC the authority to block mergers that it deems are anti-competitive and not in the best interest of the consumer. So under the Biden administration, the FTC has taken a much more aggressive stance toward mergers than the previous administration. One of the things that the FTC has done is they've essentially thrown out the vertical merger guidelines. This Microsoft ATVI deal is what's known as a vertical merger because Microsoft would be ascent- is essentially acquiring a supplier as opposed to a horizontal merger, which is between two competitors. So this is where Microsoft is acquiring ATVI, which is a supplier, that's a vertical merger. Under the law, basically the standard for whether a merger is competitive is the economic impact on consumers. So consumer welfare is the standard. The Biden administration has thrown that out and they have a new standard, which is, is public welfare, which means that under the approach taken by the Biden administration, they're gonna look at a whole host of other factors to judge whether a merger is acceptable. And those factors are are beyond the economic impact on consumers. So they can look at things like the impact on labor, the impact on ESG, on climate, on a whole set of sort of 
extraneous factors that they believe are relevant to gauging whether a merger is competitive. So in this case, the FTC filed suit and um, they basically are concerned with three things, okay? That number one, that Microsoft now is gonna gain total control over ATVI's content. This is really a big deal because ATVI has the best content in the industry, right? They have Call of Duty, Diablo, Overwatch, and a whole bunch of other games, okay? And in the gaming industry, the key competitive differentiator among these big gaming companies, so Sony, Microsoft, Tencent, is the ability to customize what's known as AAA content in games. And ATVI has AAA content, particularly in this Call of Duty game that they have, which is just a blockbuster, right? So the, the FTC is really concerned about that, number one. Number two, the FTC is concerned that Microsoft, by acquiring this content, would also have the ability to restrict and degrade the access to this content by Microsoft's rivals. Okay, that's where the anti-competitive effects come in, according to the FTC. So they're concerned that Microsoft would withhold ATVI content from rivals, that they would raise the cost of accessing ATVI's content, that they would impose onerous subscription costs on rivals, uh, they would degrade the quality of the ATI content available to uh, rivals, whereas they would provide a higher quality uh, game or ATVI content to Microsoft's customers. And then uh, they would be very, they're concerned that Microsoft is going to be able to unfairly drive customers to their cloud based subscription business for gaming by leveraging Microsoft's vast install base for all its various products. And so they just think that they're gonna to have too much economic power concentrated in Microsoft. And then the last thing that the FTC is concerned about is that they can point to past history where they claim that Microsoft snookered the EU on another deal. It was the ZeniMax deal where Microsoft promised the EU that they would not restrict access to ZeniMax content um, not restrict access to Microsoft's rivals, right? So when a deal closed, Microsoft did, according to the FTC, did just that. They basically, they basically limited access of rivals to the ZeniMax content that was put on the Microsoft Xbox. And, uh, and then they started to deny rivals access to ZeniMax content. So that's exactly the opposite of what Microsoft promised the EU. And for that reason, the EU has put the brakes on the Microsoft deal closing, right? So um, you may, we may want to go into the timeline of this now, if you want, and I can go into that. So know. Robert, like, what, what are you thinking on a probability here? What do you think the percentage chances are? It's a great question, because the spread between ATBI's current price, about 75 75 to the $95 closing price is pretty wide. So there is a concern that Microsoft could walk away from the deal or that they could lose before the ALJ and in the Court of Appeals. However, Microsoft has promised to make concessions to the FTC that will address all their concerns. So they have agreed to uh, provide their rivals with full access to ATVI's content for 10 years and not take any restrictive measure toward their rivals or toward consumers and to their customers. And that's very important because on appeal, if this case does go to appeal, if Microsoft were to lose at the FTC, the standard on appeal is what is the impact on consumer welfare? And if Microsoft can show that based on its concessions that consumers across the full spectrum of gaming providers, including their rivals, will have full content to ATBI, full access to ATBI content, then Microsoft should win on appeal. Because the law, the standard uh, for judging uh, the fairness of a merger is the impact on the consumer. And Microsoft has said that they will provide full access to ATBI's content. That means that the consumer cannot be harmed. And under the law, Microsoft should prevail ultimately on appeal. Give me a number. What what chances? 65, 35? I would say, I, I would say that Microsoft has a, a, a 50, I would say that they have a 60, 40 percent chance of prevailing before the ALJ. Although on appeal before the full commissioners, which is stacked more heavily in favor of the Democrats, they could well lose. But on appeals to the U.S. Appeals Court, 
I would give Microsoft a 65%, 70% probability of, prevail of prevailing in the Court of Appeals. Robert, thanks for speaking with us today. And we look forward to having you back on the show to talk about some other deals as well. Happy to do it. Thanks for having me. Until next time, everyone, good luck investing.